very exciting. You know, it's been a long, been a long time coming. We made this film about four years ago, and various things happened that you know stopped its uh, release. So we've all been waiting for its release. And the wonderful, miraculous thing is we all feel that this is the best time for this particular film to be released because of the story it tells about conciliation, about friendship, about courage, about standing up for the underdog, uh, standing up for your fellow man. So uh, I think it's a very, very appropriate time for this film to be shown. And we're, we're thrilled that we're here in New York um, showing it to the public finally. I play a character who is a very successful uh, person. In uh, she's an older person, obviously she's called grandmère, which means grandmother, um, and she's had a very successful life. But she had a very difficult childhood. As a young woman, she got caught up in the Holocaust in the Second World War and had to hide from the Nazis. And she was hidden by a boy that she herself had teased and been rather cruel to at school. So it's a wonderful story about redemption and about um, the, the importance of kindness. That is actually the, sort of the theme of the film, is how very important kindness is. Um, and she's telling her story to her grandson, who has been caught being a, really being a bully, being an obnoxious person at school. And she's telling him, finally telling him her story, to bring him to an understanding of how important it is to, um, to support your fellow mankind. A lovely young cast, I mean the only cast member that I really worked with was Bryce because he plays my grandson. A lot of the film takes place in, you know, in flashback uh, with the wonderful young actors Orlando and Ariel that we have. Um, but, you know, Mark is the perfect director for a film like this because he has a great sensibility, he has, he's very, he has a great intellectual quality, but he, that comes with a, a very um, feeling heart, which is very important for this piece. Yeah, so this follows after Wonder, and uh, Julian was kicked out of school, and he, uh, he still hasn't really learned his lesson, which I think is a really interesting kind of thing to, to, to learn. Most most movies that have bullies in them, you know, they either resolve it at the end or they don't at all. And this one's, it wasn't really resolved that much in Wonder. He apologized, but did he know what he was apologizing for? And I think that's why this one's so interesting. It's because he finally really understands the gravity of the hate that he, he showed in Wonder. Um, it's kind of a full circle thing where he finally gets to complete his arc. And I think that's really important to show that it's possible, you know. Mark, I was a big fan of Mark for a long time. Uh, we. Uh, my family watched World War Z a lot when I was growing up. I know it's kind of like a gory movie, but he, we, I thought his direction on that was so amazing. So hearing that he would be directing this one, I instantly said yes, no questions asked, let's go. And then hearing that Helen was a part of it, I mean, I watched The Queen while in uh, my apartment getting ready to film. And I watched it so close to filming that honestly, I, I got very nervous to meet her because she's so good at what she does. But I realized that a good actor makes you a better actor. And uh, I learned everything that I possibly could from her. She's, uh, she's amazing. Whether it's at a personal level, a historical level, no matter what, it, uh, it's a very important movie in my opinion. It's very, it's an accessible thing that we've, a story we've all heard before, but coming at a personal level with Ariel and Orlando, and yeah, I think that's really important. She starts off as a very normal teenage girl. She's 14 when we first meet her, and she sort of does normal school things, she doesn't like maths, she's got a crush on a boy in her year, and then her life is completely undone when uh, the Nazis invade France and her school is occupied and she has to escape and she's taken in by a classmate and hidden for two years. It was just such an honour to meet people like Helen Mirren and Gillian Anderson and Mark as well, it was just so special to meet them. I, watched, I tried to watch all their movies before which was just very intimidating but um, just to be able to talk to them and become close with them and they were just so welcoming and comforting and it was just very, very special. I mean, I think the really important thing is the choose kind message and that when you're in situations where there's an option to be generous and maybe that option's difficult and maybe you have to choose to be very brave to do that, you know, even a small act can have such a big impact. I mean, I think that the messages are relevant a century ago and 
unfortunately still relevant now on a and I think the important thing to note is that it's on a small scale with you know your friends people you know but also on a bigger scale of you know socially choosing kindness across the whole world is would be a good thing for everybody well Julian is I mean if we want to talk about him in terms of character he's above all kind uh, and I think that's really um, one of the methods in which the film shows um, what it wants to achieve. Uh, Julian is a boy with polio um, in uh, war-torn France in World War II and he uh, shelters uh, a Jewish girl. The people that I got to work with, um, and in particular uh, Ariella and, and all of the wonderful people in the young cast, it was just so fantastic to be able to spend several months with them bonding and working. Um, the, the film set was such a great vibe. Mark is so kind um, and so giving. I genuinely couldn't ask for anything more as a director. Um, just working with him and being able to collaborate on different ideas uh, and with his support, it made filming feel so easy. And particularly with the, um, with the subject material, it, it made dealing with that in a sensitive manner feel really comfortable uh, and it really helped me do, do my best for, for the film. The film is is really there for audiences to, to watch with an open mind and, and take away what they will. But for me, above all, it's just the ability to, in any situation uh, and in any scenario, be witness to, to the events of the world uh, and to recognise that it's really on us to, to choose kindness uh, above all. And I think that's really a great way to, to, to move forward um, with everyone. Particularly now, it's. I know we're all really excited um, because we think that this film is so important um, to to get people to see. Yeah, it's set in uh, it's set in World War Two. Um, it's set a while ago, but but we really think that the message is timeless. The message of kindness is really timeless, um, and yeah, we we just think that it's such a universal message and it's really applicable uh, in any era and in any context. RJ Palacio illustrated and wrote a beautiful graphic novel and it, that's when I first received it and then I received the Mark Bombach's script and you know we all the, the, the novel itself was already so beautifully done and illustrated that uh, I immediately knew what kind of story she wanted to tell and she you know she explores kindness in all of her work in Wonder and now here in Whitebird so that was, the, was so inspiring. I think these themes are important today because uh, we're li living in a very difficult time and it's important that we find, we find uh, you know, in, in a time that it's difficult for humanity that there's light, light around us and finding the light in, in dark times is really, is really important. It's a beautiful evening to be here to share this movie. It took a long time to bring the movie out, um, but we both feel like it's never been a better time for a movie about kindness and about um, seeing each other. And that's the beauty of tonight for both of us. You know, every time you, you finish a movie and a movie comes out, it's a very exciting moment and you hope obviously that everybody will embrace the film and the work we have done. And uh, so I, I think that, that the message of the movie is very timely and. It's a message of kindness, and uh, I hope people will go and see it. It was uh, we cast it during COVID, so we had to cast on Zoom, and it's a love story. It's a teenage love story, and uh, you, the two leads have to have chemistry, and you want to make sure on Zoom that sometimes hard to judge. So I was very nervous till I meet I met them the first time if they actually will have chemistry and uh, and uh, and that it will work. Well, Mark Bomback was the first. I mean, when we talked about adapting the book into a movie, you know, he just he and I just realigned. We had the same sort of vision for it, and then Mark Forster came along, and he also just kind of brought it to the next level. Um, Mark just brought this artistry, the cinematography, the lighting. I mean, there's a texture to this film that is so beautiful, and it's something that I I don't see that often anymore in movies. It, it it's it's epic. It's got this epic. Um, quality, but it's also extremely tender. Um, the humanity just shines through on every single frame. So uh, yeah, I'm really thrilled with the adaptation. 
Well, Helen Mirren can do no wrong in any movie she's in. So the moment we had her signed up, I was like, okay, this is this is going to be something really special. Gillian Anderson in the part of Vivienne is incredible. I mean, just heartbreaking. And the two, the three stars that we I hope you you've interviewed them um, are just phenomenal. They bring such depth to the characters. They uh, their voicings, their artistry, their craftsmanship, their pathos, um, their humor uh, is, is just extraordinary. There, I think I think we're going to see much more of them in the future. Well, especially now uh, in a time when the world is um, so radicalized, uh, we tend not to see one another anymore. And I think what this movie does, what the story does, is remind us of. Um, of the need to see one another again, of the need to notice one another, to reach out across aisles, across differences, um, across uh, experiences, and reconnect, because we're all human beings, and this movie is about finding that shared humanity, you know, and, and um, that, that's really at the heart of the movie, and that's, I think, what comes through on every frame. I first met Raquel, uh, again, probably about 2020, and we had a really long, sort of very casual conversation talking about a lot of influences that came into the writing of the graphic novel. One of them in particular uh, was Cinema Paradiso, which I wouldn't have assumed, but then we wound up really bonding over that movie and also um, the Louis Malle movie, uh, Au revoir les enfants. And so we sort of used those as, as touchstones. And then really, she, because she's also a producer on it and is so gifted at storytelling, she became a, sort of an invaluable partner for me. So I would write a draft, send it to her, run ideas by her. And uh, it's a great collaboration and Mark Forrester joined the team. And again, we all just became sort of a really cohesive group. So it was a pleasure to adapt. It was the first time I'd ever worked with Mark. We had a lot of mutual friends, but we never actually worked together. It was strange because uh, I was wrapping up something in post-production and he was coming on. We actually never physically were in the same space the entire thing because COVID hit. And so all of our prep was done during um, COVID and actually even some of the rehearsals we did were over Zoom. So uh, the first time we were physically in the same space was once we'd already wrapped here in New York, we had dinner together, which was weird. Yeah, but great. I didn't realize how tall he was. <laughs> it was a shock to me. It's interesting because when something starts as a graphic novel, you do have some sort of references visually that you might not in just a novel. Um, and everybody sort of embodies those characters that Raquel created so perfectly. Um, I think also the two kids are just revelations. Like, I personally had not seen them in anything before and was blown away by both of their performances. Amazing. Yeah, I think this is the type of film that sticks with you for a number of days after you watch it as an audience goer. Um, you know, the final cut and the final version did with me as I grabbed a bucket of popcorn and just enjoyed what was in front of me. And I found myself thinking about, okay, what are ways in my life that I can exhibit kindness that I had never thought about before? Because here are these people that were stuck in this extraordinary situation, and they did the unthinkable by being kind to the other person to the point of sacrificing their life. And it's like, it was so inspiring, so inspiring, the whole thing is. So for me, it was just, uh, like Andy said, you know, we, as Kingdom Story Company, we uh, endeavor to do stories about a rush of hope, and this one is that in spades yeah. yeah I mean I remember when, when I first saw the the original movie Wonder and it was all about kindness and uh, we had just started our relationship with Lionsgate and they had become our distribution partner and we're just like if we could ever be a part of a movie like that that would be amazing so Whitebird comes along and it takes that idea of kindness and it adds the element of courage to it in this one so there's a line in the movie that's in the trailer that gets me every time where you know where this grandmother's trying to impart to, to her grandson this you know importance of, of that idea, and she said when an act of kindness could cost you your life, uh, it becomes uh, somewhat of a miracle. So it's that idea of courage. I think we need courage in the world right now to do the right thing and to be kind to people and to stick up for the underdog. You know the themes of it are so prevalent today. Uh, you know, in a very divisive world, I would say, uh, kindness is so needed right now. And to kind of let go of your circumstances and to be able to treat um, your fellow neighbor, uh, the person standing right next to you with the utmost of selfless kindness and self-sacrifice, just a beautiful story. It's a beautiful message to be able to get that out there right now. Yeah. And I, I, I think on top of that, like, the whole movie is this... Uh, you know, beautiful dialogue between generations uh, of an older woman trying to help her 
teenage grandson understand that you know that idea of kindness is timeless and uh, helps by letting him enter into her story and it feels very modern even though we're back in time so there's something so beautiful and whimsical and that's really a tribute to, to Mark Forrester like he's a master storyteller so that's why stories like this are things we're proud to be associated with at Kingdom.